consideration happening now. Texas is not going to tolerate violence, vandalism, or rioting. Governor Greg Abbott proposing new penalties for rioters and looters. What the governor's plan entails and why it's already under heavy criticism. An update in the case of Breonna Taylor. Could federal charges still be a possibility? The three largest San Antonio school districts releasing the numbers. How many COVID-19 cases they're seeing just three months into the school year. And despite a little warming trend on the way, we're still looking at the prospects of a cold front in the days ahead. I'll be back to tell you more about that coming right up. Chainsaws to bicycles and chairs sold at HEB. Coming up, recalls you'll want to know about. The News at 5 starts right now. First at five, as protests around the country are focused on changing policing, Governor Greg Abbott is taking aim at what state law classifies as riots. The governor unveiling several legislative proposals he wants to see. Garrett Berger takes us through them. Now, Texas will always defend the First Amendment right to peacefully protest, but Texas is not going to tolerate violence, vandalism, or rioting. Governor Greg Abbott today proposing increased and new penalties for actions during riots for things like causing property damage, attacking police, or even what he said was to aid and abet a riot by providing funds or organizational support. The governor also said he wants the attorney general to be able to pursue civil penalties against people or organizations who assist in riots. And he wants people charged with these offenses kept in jail at least until their first court appearance. Uh, we're tired of seeing all these rioters uh, do uh, they're, they're rioting. Uh, they, they get arrested, they go in, uh, and 30 minutes later, they're back out on the street. The state's Democratic Party chairman released a statement after the press conference saying in part, quote, instead of talking about the issues that matter most to Texans, ending the coronavirus crisis, protecting and expanding health care coverage, and building our economy back better, Abbott chose to introduce nonsensical proposals that will not hold up in court. San Antonio has seen frequent protests against police violence since the death of George Floyd. Most of it has been peaceful, though there have been cases of violence and vandalism. While Abbott also talked about reforming policing, he did not actually include any specific proposals on that front. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. And now there is already pushback against the governor's proposals, specifically from a local activist who has organized peaceful protests and made strides in registering demonstrators to vote this November. Valerie Reifert with the Radical Registrars says Governor Abbott's focus proves black lives don't matter to him. In addition to stricter penalties for rioters and looters, she feels legislation needs to be created to better protect the public against police officers who abuse their power. I do not condone rioting or looting, but what I also don't condone is this habitual and constant repetition of history. Reifert says she believes new legislative proposals centered around current events need to address ways to help outrage communities heal and help improve the trust some people lack in government systems. Our Devin Clark has more on this story coming up on the News at 6. Three men all facing capital murder charges in the shooting death of 20 year old Miguel Carvajal Jr. He was shot twice during a drug deal on the far west side on Tuesday. His body found inside a parked car in the 9800 block of Petranco Road. The three suspects have been identified as Trevon Cheney, 18 year old Avier Smith and 19 year old Roger Kuntz. Arrest records state a witness who was in the car with Carvajal before he was shot told police two of the suspects got into the back seat and pulled out handguns. He says as they opened fire, Carvajal reached for his own gun. Police believe he fired at least one shot, striking one of those suspects. The witness says he got out of the car and ran while the suspects fired shots in his direction and then drove off. He was dropped off at a nearby hospital. The witness identified all three suspects through video surveillance and a photo lineup. Investigators also linked Cheney to the scene through an ankle monitor he was wearing. Well, we have learned the name of a man killed while trying to cross Loop 410 last night. He's been identified as 17-year-old Damien Frank Escobar. San Antonio police say it happened around 11.30 last night on Southwest Loop 410 near Marbach Road. The driver did not see Escobar before she hit him. She did, however, stay at the scene to try and help and will not face any charges.
The FBI continuing its investigation into the Breonna Taylor case, even as a grand jury in Louisville, Kentucky, announced that none of the officers involved will be indicted on criminal charges related to her death. Here's ABC's Rena Roy with the latest from Louisville. Federal charges in the shooting death of Brianna Taylor are still a possibility. A spokesperson for the FBI telling ABC News the Bureau is still investigating all aspects of the case, even after a Kentucky grand jury's decision not to charge any officers in her death. Former officer Brett Hankison was charged with three counts of first degree wanton endangerment, not for firing the shots that killed Brianna, but for recklessly shooting into a neighboring apartment. The attorney general says the two other officers involved in the botched March 13th raid were justified in firing their weapons because they were returning fire from Taylor's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker. Daniel Cameron fell. He needs to learn the law of self-defense in Kentucky because as he stated it yesterday, he was off base. The attorney general also declined for now to release the grand jury report or reveal any details about the grand jury itself. Taylor's family demanding transparency. Did he present any evidence on behalf of Breonna Taylor? Because if he didn't, then he unilaterally put his finger on the scale of justice and made sure that these police officers were exonerated. The grand jury's decision sparking angry protests, dozens of people arrested overnight. Public safety and the work for racial equity and justice can and must coexist. Two Louisville officers shot during the violence. Major Aubrey Gregory, treated for a gunshot wound to the hip, was released from the hospital. And Officer Robin Desroches underwent surgery after being shot in the abdomen. He's recovering. Officials are, of course, hoping things are more peaceful tonight. Like last night, there will be a curfew beginning at 9 o'clock. The governor has also sent in 500 National Guard personnel. Rena Roy, ABC News, Louisville. President Trump says he has one woman in mind to replace Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But before he announces his pick, the president and first lady honored Justice Ginsburg for her legacy on the high court. Camila Bernal is at the Supreme Court with more. President Trump and the first lady paying their respects to Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The president wearing a mask stood silently in front of Justice Ginsburg's casket as a crowd chanted. Then the crowd's cries changed. Reflecting Justice Ginsburg's request not to be replaced until after the next president is installed. But Republicans are on track to confirm a justice before the election. We do not know yet which legal all-star from his list he will nominate. But strangely enough, we already do know exactly what the far left will start shouting the instant, the instant she or he is introduced. Cementing a conservative court could not only impact decisions for generations, but the Supreme Court could also be called to determine the presidential winner if the vote is contested. We want to make sure the election is honest, and I'm not sure that it can be. The president blaming potential voting fraud on mail-in ballots. Will you commit to making sure that there is a peaceful transfer of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. Republicans pointing to the presidential election as proof why Justice Ginsburg's seat should be filled quickly. A 4-4 Supreme Court is not a good deal for America. We need a nine-person Supreme Court. And people wonder about the peaceful transfer of power. I can assure you it will be peaceful. In Washington, I'm Camila Bernal. Students in Bear County have been back in the classroom for almost a month, and today the state released its first set of COVID-19 data for public school districts. Here's a breakdown of the three largest districts in Bear County. The Northeast ISD reporting 11 student cases and 14 staff cases. Northside ISD, 9 student cases, 35 staff cases. San Antonio ISD reporting one positive student case so far and 16 staff cases. Districts started phasing in students for on-campus learning on September 8th. In Bernie and Comal ISDs, students returned to campus in August. Bernie ISD reporting 17 cases among students, five among staff. And Comal, Comal ISD has reported 25 cases among students and nine among staff. 
Statewide, more than 3,400 student cases, 2,800 staff cases. The TEA is reporting these numbers every week. You can find all this information on our website, ksat.com. It sure turned into a beautiful afternoon over the Alamo City and all of South Texas. We're still dealing with some clouds far east of San Antonio. We're talking Hallettsville, Smiley area, even toward Cuero. Vast majority of us clear sky right now, and that's going to help temperatures fall off pretty quickly this evening. Right now, 88 Del Rio, 85 Eagle Pass. In Joanne's backyard in Lakey, 86. In Divine, Ethan's reporting 88. But as low as 82 in Bulverde and Canyon Lake, even New Braunfels at 82 degrees. As we go through the evening, temperatures falling off through the 70s by 8 p.m. We'll be in the upper 70s, 10 p.m. lower 70s, so comfortable. Some clouds developing later on tonight, but we're not looking at any rain chances anytime soon. But if you are looking for another taste of fall, I've got a cold front to talk about. I'll tell you about it coming up. Thank you, Adam. Governor Greg Abbott's new guidelines for nursing homes and assisted living facilities taking effect today. The governor made the announcement last week allowing these types of places to expand visitation. Under the new guidance, nursing homes where there are no active COVID-19 cases can once again allow outdoor, no contact, open window, and some indoor visitations. Today, we met up with one woman who is reuniting with her mother for the first time in weeks. She says despite keeping a six foot distance outdoors and not being able to hug, getting to visit in person makes all the difference. It just makes you, um, I guess, appreciate life a little bit more. Just because we can't do it doesn't mean that we don't experience it. And I think that's a good part about it is that you still have that visual of each other. And, and I think that makes it, you know, special. For more on the governor's announcement over the guidelines, you can head to our website, ksat.com. From power yard tools you may have in your garage to bicycles, hundreds of thousands of household products are being pulled from the market for safety reasons. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has our recall roundup. Before you tackle the landscaping, check your saws. First Cobalt is recalling 150,000 chainsaws sold at Lowe's for the past six years. These are 12-inch cordless electric chainsaws. The problem? They can remain in the on position, posing a risk of serious injury. Cobalt is also recalling more than 100,000 pole saws, also cordless, electric, and sold at Lowe's. The saw may continue running even after the trigger is released. Electric bikes are all the buzz. Now thousands of these are recalled. Pedigo is pulling six models because a defective electrical cable can cause the bicycle to accelerate unexpectedly. Contact a dealer for a repair. Hit the brakes on these bikes too. Specialized bicycle components is recalling thousands of its Cirrus models. The alloy crank arm can disengage and the rider can lose control. Injuries from a torn bicep to road rash have been reported. And did you buy one of these chairs from HEB? Caravan Global is recalling these blue fold-up sports chairs. The fabric can rip apart from the frame. HEB sold these last May. You can contact Caravan Global and get your money back. If you need more information about any of those recalls, just head on over to our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, the countdown to Halloween is on, and if you're unsure how to celebrate this year, the CDC has come up with a list of activities ranked by risk level. Which activities you might want to avoid and suggestions on how to switch things up this year. It's coming up next. Halloween is still over a month away, but the Centers for Disease Control releasing new guidelines on how families should celebrate this year. The CDC has categorized activities by risk level, traditional door to door trick or treating, costume parties, hay rides, haunted houses. Those are all considered high risk, and the CDC is asking families to avoid these traditions. Under the moderate risk level activities like one way trick or treating, which involves lining up goodie bags for families to grab, and go from a distance. Costume parades with six feet distance between groups. Trips to pumpkin patches or orchards, keeping hand sanitizer and masks handy. 
Among the lowest risk for celebrating pumpkin carving and decorating outdoors with family, neighbors or friends, decorating your home or apartment, doing a scavenger hunt perhaps, and a virtual Halloween costume contest. <laughs> You can even make a movie night with your family. And of course, anyone who has COVID-19 or has been exposed to it should stay away from others. Well, don't forget this Saturday is the annual Head for the Cure. There is still time to register and you can get $5 off using the code last chance. This year's run and walk is virtual. So snap a selfie and share it with Head for the Cure on Facebook or YouTube at 8 a.m. You can find a link to register on ksatcommunity.com. This was a gorgeous day. Loved it. Beautiful. I would say so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely beautiful out there today. And we're going to see more of the same in the days ahead. But if you're looking for a little more of a taste of fall, I think I've got something up my sleeve as we get into next week. Let's start with a look at our drought monitor. And I want to start with last week's so we have something to compare the newest one to. And of course, it comes out every Thursday. So take a look at last week's and in three, two, one. Boom, this week's you notice along the coastline. That's where all of the dryness and drought was wiped away as a result, mostly of beta and other shower activity that we had. But we still have an area of severe to extreme drought from Uvalde to La Prior, Carrizo Springs area. This narrow band here of enhanced drought, unfortunately, is still persisting. And as we look forward in time, I don't think we'll be chipping away at it anytime soon. Rain chances are slim. I mean, slim to none, basically. 10% chance on Sunday, and I think that's a stretch, and about a 10% chance on Monday. But Monday, that would be the results of a cold front, and a cold front that would make a noticeable impact on our weather. So let's talk about it, starting with temperatures. Right now we're at 85, dew point is 62, wind is already calm out there. It's going to be a beautiful evening, hardly a breeze, temperatures falling from the 80s, quickly down into the 70s after sunset. Castroville right now at 89, but we're 80 in Canyon Lake, 81 Bernie, Stinson at 84 degrees, and some locations around the 90 degree mark, including Hondo, currently at 92, but where the clouds have held tight, LaGrange and Victoria, only in the upper 70s. Those clouds on the backside of the remnants of Beta, very stubborn to get out of town, and they're right now in East Texas, and there's also another upper level swirl that's assisting those, but they're gradually moving their way eastward. They've taken their time. It's important we talk about the overall weather pattern here, as we get into next week, upper level high is going to park itself over the West Coast. That's important because then we have this big dip in the upper level flow by early next week. That's going to be dipping all the way down into Texas. And what this means is cooler air from Canada will be pulled southward. I think by the second half of Monday and then especially noticed into Tuesday. So let's talk about it temperature wise in terms of the forecast. I'll take you slowly through this tomorrow morning. 63 degrees, so a pleasant start to the day. 89 the high temperature, a good amount of sunshine throughout the day. Into the weekend, we climb into the lower 90s, 91, 92 for the high Saturday, Sunday, and partly cloudy. It's gonna be one of those situations where you notice the humidity in the air, and we'll have the low morning clouds give way to afternoon sun. That's Saturday and Sunday. Right now, the thinking is Monday morning, we'll have the cold front hit briefly making it to about 82 degrees for the high temperature, a gusty Monday. It's kind of our transition day on Monday as that cold front moves through. And then look what happens for the remainder of next week, Tuesday through Thursday. We're looking at mornings near 60, but I'm leaning toward more upper 50s for a good chunk of us. Ah. So a little more fall like in the morning and afternoons. I mean, low to mid 80s with nothing but sunshine there. Sounds. I don't know if you could wait. hear the clap. <laughs> He yes, was doing a little golf clap over here for that forecast. Thank so. you, Adam. All right, clearly the Cowboys need to change some things before this game this week. Especially when they play on the road because they haven't had a lot of success going back to last year even. So when we come back here, what is the secret to the Cowboys' success trying to get that first road win under new head coach Mike McCarthy? And in the back of their minds, are the Texans thinking about avoiding that 0-3 start that's looming coming up? Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. We want to score as fast as we can, as many times as we can. I mean, you know, as far as the start of the game and 
throughout the game. But I mean, when you, you get down in the fourth quarter, that's you know that's part of the game management. Uh, I think we have an excellent game to come off of. You know, there's no way we wanted to put Matt Ryan back on that field uh, and give him an opportunity. So you know, just the way in, in, in the way you know Dak handled the clock there at the end. You know, hopefully we're in that same situation. 5 p.m. in Seattle. Like the Cowboys, the Houston Texans are faced with a challenge on the road, taking on undefeated Pittsburgh at Heinz Field. The Steelers are undefeated so far this season. Starting off 20 and 20 and 2 and 0 right now, the Texans are winless with both losses to the Chiefs and the Ravens. How much is it in the back of the Texans' minds of trying to avoid going 0 and 3 on this Sunday? That's not the issue. I mean, we're not really thinking about that. We're just worried about, you know, doing what we need to do out there on Sundays and, and playing our best, you know, best football. And we'll see what the outcome comes. And, um, you know, that's all we can do is just put our head down and grind and just and just work and try to do what we do and see what the outcome come like. And, of course, we don't want to be 0-3, but that's not the, the main thing that's on our minds right now. And kickoff in Pittsburgh on Sunday is at high noon. Charges have been dropped against Patriots owner Robert Kraft. The prosecutors say they would not go forward with a misdemeanor case after courts ruled they could not use the video of inside the massage parlor where Kraft had been accused of paying for sex in Florida. Don't look now, but the Miami Heat are one win away from returning to the able to beat Boston last night in game four of the Eastern Conference Finals. A hero of the game. Tyler Hero scored 37 points and scored in double figures in every playoff game so far. The Heat win at 112 to 109. One more victory in there back in the finals. It wouldn't be kind of awkward. They wound up playing the Lakers and LeBron would have to face the Heat. That would be awesome. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh -huh. All right. Thanks so much, Greg. Sure. We'll be right back. A beautiful evening. Calm wind, temperatures gradually making their way down through the 70s will lead to a morning tomorrow with widespread 60s, even some upper 50s in the hill country. We're thinking 68 Catula, Gonzales at 64 and San Antonio 63 around sunrise into the afternoon, right up near the 90 degree mark locally. But you go to the Rio Grande, Eagle Pass, Laredo, Del Rio, mid 90s. So a little bit warmer there through the weekend. I do think pretty much all of us will be at or into the lower 90s. With a mixture of sun and clouds, it's Monday we're looking at the prospects of the next cold front that should arrive Monday morning, making Monday that transition day where the wind picks up, you feel the big drop in humidity, and then te temperatures take a bit of a tumble for the remainder of the week. So Tuesday morning, ECs, that's your time. Yes, can't wait. Thank you so much, Adam. Thanks for watching the News at 5. World News Up next. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock.